Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakestad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex. Dash trading dash unlock dot com. That's forex dash trading dash unlock dot com. Teddy Cakes, that what's going on? We got a lot of volatility in the U.S. dollar today. Actually, this week so far. There's no doubt, man. Uh, so uh, you know, what do you think? I mean, it jumped in that higher trading range, and then it didn't hold last week. No, but I'll tell you what, the yen, how about, remember last week we had, when we talked last week, we had that big explosive move to the upside and we were heading towards our, you know, the target of a dollar twelve or one twelve to one twelve half that I've been looking for for a while. I didn't think it was going to happen for at least another month and uh, we fell back pretty strong, but I think that we had a nice bounce yesterday and I think you're going to see this bull continue, especially okay. with uh, the gold, way gold sold off yes, uh, yesterday. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So that, and you, well, you know what was interesting, Teddy, is that I, I was, we, Tommy and I were talking, we were actually on the air, but in, off the air. You know, I was so paranoid of that, you know, 110 and a half in the yen, but guess what? That didn't stop gold. I mean, gold went to 1691. Do you know what I mean? Right. Really gold did what it was supposed to do, and then you get, a, you get a pullback. But I thought that was so intriguing because that was the first time in quite some time that it didn't hit it when it was actually at highs. I mean, it got, it got hit yesterday, but by then, right. the yen had already pulled off, so, you know. Right. Pretty wild. So, so the U.S. dollar yen bull, I think, is definitely proving that it's not going anywhere, even though the dollar seems like it wants to kind of, you know, I think the coronavirus, it may not, I wouldn't say it's overdone, um, but it's, it's heavily factored into the marketplace, you know, and I think that the volatility, especially we've seen in the yen, is starting to show that we're going to start, we're going to really st see some really big swings because I think the interest rate market might start to get some moves as well. Yeah, well, we had the 10-year, what, break all-time lows yesterday, right? Right. You know? So that's going to be intriguing uh, in itself. And, of course, you know, market-wise, we get a little bounce out here today. Uh, some of these, uh, not necessarily third world countries, but some of these emerging market countries, their have, have currencies have got actually smoked, right? Well, how, you know, what's funny is uh, I've been talking about the Turkish lira to some people for the past, like, week and a half about, now, most people don't look at the Turkish lira, but it's a really good indicator about what's going on, especially with the Middle East and stuff like that. Yeah. And now with the coronavirus um, exploding in Iraq and then, uh, or excuse me, Iran and also moving into Pakistan and stuff like that, it's definitely impacting the, the Turkish lira. And if you look at that chart, anyone that's been, does look at it, it's been grinding higher for, it's been trading higher for, for months on end, yeah. actually. Uh, but it's a wide trade. Like, if you trade that market, the spread is really wide. Like, it would be like, it's trading, what is it, like $6 something. It'll be like a, right a 40 now, yeah. pip wide uh, spread, you right. know? So to trade that market getting in and out, you really have to be on the right side, you right. know? So, but this one, I'm telling you, like, right now, if you're a skittish bull, like, I'm it, buying into these highs is something that's really rough with their volatility, but this market could be 20% higher in another six months, literally, with the way things are going. Well, and the, the, the high, is, right, is 7.23. So I'm looking. Mm -hmm. That's that's what 2018, right? Right. I mean, that's that's a that's a weak lira, right? <laughs> very, very. Yeah. And I think it's going to continue, especially. I mean, you know, the Iranian prime minister, not the uh, the health minister, or whatever, yesterday said that the coronavirus wasn't going to be a big deal in Iran. It's it's contained. And then today they find out he has it. You know. So <laughs> where is that for stability there? And I think that's definitely going to out. You know, like you said, like some of our lesser currencies versus the dollar, uh, they're getting smoked. And I think they're going to continue to get smoked for the next couple months in a very, very big way. But you have to be ready for that volatility and have to be able to bear that risk as well. Yeah. And folks, if you want to see something, what Teddy just brought up, okay, about that minister, if you Google that, you're going to see when he was saying it's contained, he's coughing, he's got a handkerchief off, he's wiping sweat off his brow. That's one of the weirdest things I've seen, meaning, you know, we know that sitting up there blatantly lying and he's sick himself, man. But when you see that video, right. it's crazy. So right. look, look at the British real, not that we do, the, we do that, but I mean, I mean, Brazilian, the, Brazil is a monster commodity com uh, country. And like, look at this thing, man, right? It's, right. it's blowing my mind, man. I mean, we're at 4.39 real, folks, to one U.S. dollar. So I, th I think this is all-time lows. Let me find this out for a second. It is. And I think you're. I think you're right that the, these trends, especially in mark, emerging markets like these, they're going to continue, and they're going to be very aggressive for the rest of this year. I think. Yeah. Wow. I, I wonder, like, 
Now, when you look at the currency markets, what the fundamental reason would be that they're getting so weak because their economies are weak. Would that be correct in correlation to the other currencies? That would be typically what I look at for okay. sure. And now, especially that now there's the factor with the coronavirus that you put in as well as a big right. fundamental. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and that's also with trade too. Like we don't know how the real impact is going to be yet for another like three yes. to six months at least. Right. You know. So, and then look at what happened now with Italy. And like this is pretty scary. Oh. I mean, they, they. I know that they brought people in, but they in one day they went from a, an extra 200 cases or something like that in right. this one town in Italy. You know. So that's uh, if this is not contained, and I mean they already cut off the rail lines between Austria and Italy. If they start containing the countries within the EU, I mean, talk about a nightmare. I mean, oh. we're not containing our borders between our states and the United States right now, and that's equivalent to what's almost going on now over there. There's no doubt. And unfortunately, folks, you know, Italy, where almost in March, anyone that basically is, you know, go to, going to Europe for the summer, you know, for a week or whatever, this is going to impact them because this is kind of when you'd be planning because hotels are so expensive, basically. You know, you, you, if you're planning to go there, you'd be planning right now, man, unless you had a multi-billion, millions and say, okay, I'm just jumping on the plane. But... That's gonna that's gonna hit quite a bit, man. I mean, right. Well, you know, you know what's funny is like I was in the S and P's for years. You know that. Yes. And transportations are something you stocks are what you always look at as a major indicator for the S and P's. And I think the transportation stocks over the next six months we're really gonna see like as the travel agency agencies yep. uh, start to get hit. I mean, think about this. You just discussed this trip. Even if you can get a good deal because of what's going on, what happens if you end up going to Europe and all of a sudden there's an outbreak and you get contained for? Whoa. I mean, you're not gonna be contained for just two weeks. You could be contained for a month yes. and then when you do come back to the US you're gonna be in quarantine <sighs> again for at oh least two God. weeks to four weeks that's intense. you know yeah could you imagine if you if you were on a budget and you actually went on a trip like that you could go from being just treading water in life going on a trip to having devastating your whole life financial situation no no and hey listen something that uh, you know actually we forgot to bring up what they did last night in Hong Kong did you see this Teddy in Hong What's Kong that? if you're a resident of Hong Kong folks they gave every resident 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. Yeah, every resident. This is like, I saw this coming across the tape. I'm saying to myself, wow. I mean, that's, that's an indication of like how bad things actually are, right? Right, I mean, absolutely. That's pretty intense, man. And I can see why they can do it because it's kind of what you just brought up. If you're shut down, well, how, how we, you need something to live on, right? That's, that's right. the real bottom line, man. Crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what happens in some of these smaller countries? I mean, like we see what's going on in Iran. Like you just made this comment about the, you know, we were talking about this prime, uh, the health guy. Yes. What about what about some of these other countries in Africa? If this really spreads, yeah. now we don't know how it's spreading through Iran and with their borders. We know Pakistan locked up their borders and yeah. stuff like that. So we'll Crazy. see. Hey, Absolutely. you have a great one, safe one, Teddy. Look forward to speaking to you next Wednesday. Absolutely. Hopefully the video works. That <laughs> will. It will. Thanks, guys. Come right back, folks.